The moment has come, the time is here, let's talk about 2022 in film. Here are my top 10 favorite films of this year. Some obvious disclaimers up front, I haven't seen every film of 2022. I'm sorry, I'm just one person. Some ones that I'm specifically bummed about are Tar and Babylon. I don't know if those would have made my top 10, but I know a lot of people are raving about those films, so I wish I could have seen them before making this list. Part of the reason I do that is because I like to get this video out before the year is over. I know not everyone does that, but I like to look back at these videos as some sort of historical document of what my top 10 was at that time. There's always going to be a movie that came out this year that I don't watch until next year or even years to come that in hindsight I would have put on this list, but I just can't see them all, so we're just going to go with what I've seen. Another disclaimer that I always have to say is that your favorite movies might not be my favorite movies. This isn't necessarily like the best movies of 2022, just my personal favorite. So there is a chance that your favorites might not be on here. Let me know in the comments when we're done and let me know what I missed. Before I get to 10, I want to give some honorable mentions to films that just barely missed the list and they would fall 11 through 15. In no particular order, those films are Banshees of the Inisherin, Barbarian, The Batman, Nope, and RRR. All films that were very close to making this top 10. But let's find out what did make the top 10. Let's go. Delightful is an understatement when describing this film. The plot is simple, but the charm is strong, and this film really sells itself on Marcel's innocence and view on the world. There are many deep themes that are communicated in simple ways, similar to the way a child would process and describe complex thoughts. I did not expect this film to move me the way it did, but there are several scenes that evoked a variety of emotions and left me processing my own life and existence, and that all happened due to a talking shell. <laughs> For some odd, maybe not so shocking reasons, this film seems to be very polarizing depending what parts of the internet you spend your time on. I just don't care anymore. I love the franchise of Avatar. The 3D technology used to create such a rich experience is the exact reason I go to the movies. While the action scenes keep you on the edge of your seat, it's also the world building and the quieter moments of the film that work so well and make you feel like you are in Pandora. Admittedly, on my first viewing, I didn't really connect a lot with the plot or the characters, but on my second viewing, it kind of all just clicked, and I couldn't deny that this deserved a spot on my top 10. A comedy thriller that makes food look so cinematic and also horrifying, while also making you contemplate how you create and consume art. Chef's kiss. Food always seems to have a way of communicating a deeper message about art when you see it portrayed on film, and this one is no different. While my reading of it may come across as overly pretentious, I do think just viewing it straightforward as a piece of entertainment also works. The performances are fantastic, and there are plenty of visuals and imagery that will stick with you well beyond your viewing experience. Blockbusters are still alive and well as long as Tom Cruise has anything to say about it. There's only a few not so subtle scenes where he gets his point across on how he feels about the current state of the box office, but after the film gets that out of the way, it spends the entire film showing exactly why practical non CG action scenes are still important and necessary. Top Gun Maverick should be the standard of all legacy sequels, especially because they don't seem to stop making them. It's the perfect balance between acknowledging the original film and paying tribute to it, and also progressing the story to a new generation, creating bigger emotional stakes. A two-hour historical epic about a Viking is usually not my thing, but Robert Eggers always finds a way to keep me entertained and engaged. A classic tale that we have seen time and time again being retold by Shakespeare and also Disney Animation Studios. Nevertheless, Eggers brings breathtaking cinematography, gorgeous color grading, and action that works so fluently with the camera work that is both disturbing and captivating. The message of toxic masculinity is hidden beneath this very dark and brutal action flick, and the themes go well beyond that, making this feel much more important than your average historical epic. This is a not-so-subtle social commentary on the wealthy. And depending on how obvious and on the nose you like your movies, that will probably determine your opinion of this film. It just all worked for me, and I love how over-the-top this is. A journey that will lead you to a conclusion that you couldn't possibly imagine at the beginning of this film. It's goofy at times, with slapstick comedy and subtle humor and the dry delivery of every actor giving a straight performance. It has something very important to say about society, even if it beats you over the head trying to get its message across. It's 2022 and Steven Spielberg is still pumping out some of the best of his career. This semi-autobiographical film outlines the early years of Spielberg growing up in his high school and gives a real emphasis to his relationship with his parents, especially concerning his love of movie making. This has all the elements of an Oscar nominated, if not an Oscar winning film, but it goes farther than just being a movie about the love of movies. This is a film about relationships in many different capacities and how you process those relationships, especially the difficult ones, through your passion. It's beautifully made and specifically Michelle Williams gives one of my favorite performances of the year and I will not be shocked at all when this cleans up during award season. Park Chan-wook will always give you a great 
film experience and decision to leave is no exception to that. It's a detective mystery at heart, but it's also a creative achievement that plays on the expectations and tropes that you would expect from this genre. It works entirely on its own as a straight up mystery, as you are following this detective as he solves a man's murder and gets entangled with the victim's wife. Where it goes beyond that, is shocking and thrilling and turns into something completely different than you may have expected within the first half of this film. However, for those looking for something deeper within that, that also exists and I would say that on a technical level, hardly any other film competes with this one when it comes to its cinematography and art direction. The transitions between scenes are so beautiful and while not always necessary, it's fun to see a director so passionate about his craft and watch this incredible work of art as the final product. It's usually rare when a film is released so early on in the year and it remains in my top 10, but here we are. This is a film that has a lot going for it. An original concept that fits perfectly in this current cultural moment where pop culture is fast-paced, quick-witted, and also obsessed with the multiverse. I honestly feel bad for films that came before and that will come after this one that deal with the multiverse because this should definitely be the standard of how you should tackle this topic. It's a deep emotional journey that deals with a variety of relationships that can be connected to anyone viewing it. One of the most ambitious films I've ever seen, and it all works so well in a way that doesn't even make sense. For the longest time, this was my favorite film of the year but just because it's at number two, I don't want that to diminish how incredible I think it is. So, what is my favorite film of 2022? After Sun is such a personal film to me, to the point where I'm almost hesitant to recommend it to people just because there's a very high chance that you will not connect with it the same way that I did. That's not to say you shouldn't watch it, because you absolutely should, but there are very few films that have connected to me on this deep of a level. It's a slow burn in a way that makes me want to take back every time I've used that term for films that came before this one. You're essentially just hanging out with the father, daughter, and little to no plots happening around them other than just you as the audience getting to know them. There were definitely moments watching this film where I questioned, am I even enjoying my time? But then the end hit, I took a couple hours to process it, and it hit me so hard that I realized this was by far my favorite film of the year. I've seen a lot of people place this high on their list of their top films of the year, and I actually find it interesting that the majority of people talking about it come at it from the perspective of the child relating to their parents. I definitely understand that perspective, but I found myself relating on both ends. If anything, more so from the parent perspective. I'm about to finish my first year of being a parent, and so watching this father on screen wasn't just relatable, it's what I think about all the time. The balance of wanting to be vulnerable with your child while at the same time protecting them from your own darkness that you carry with you and not want to put that upon them. It's something I relate to all too well, especially because I'm not always the healthiest mentally. And so I wonder how am I going to handle that while also raising a child? And I think this film does a beautiful job of showing the mess of that and the complexity of it. And it's something that I think if you can relate to, it's going to hit so hard. If you can't relate to it, I'd be really curious to see if you still enjoy this movie. It is a beautiful film, and I do think I would recommend it and hope that you can find something in here that you can attach yourself to. So those are my top 10 favorite films of 2022. If you're curious about movies I didn't list off, go check my letterbox, see if I watched that film. If I hadn't watched it, tell me which ones I need to watch, and if there is one that I rated low that you disagree with and think it should be on this list, comment below, let me know what was your favorite film of 2022. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and I will see you in 2023.